Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here's another video on gases. Gases number two. So let's get started. Bam! So today we're talking about the gas equation review. So this is a review of all the equations that you're going to use in this entire unit. So you're going to highlight this slide, memorize this slide, memorize this video, memorize all the equations. Now that is the first step, and then you got to know when to use which equation thereafter. So let's get moving on this. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to note down is that all your temperatures must be in Kelvin in this entire unit. It doesn't matter which equation you're using, it doesn't matter what temperature you start off with, you have to have all your units of temperature in Kelvin. So you're going to convert all your degrees Celsius into Kelvin. That's degree Celsius plus 270, what? 273.15, and that will give you your Kelvin temperature. All right, so this is Maxwell's equation. Maxwell's equation is RMS, and that means root mean squared. Root is the square root portion of it, mean is an average, and squared is for the square root portion of it. You should see that that u right there, which is a mu, squared, and it's a bar over it. That means it's an average, and it's a square root of it. That is equal to 3 RT divided by capital M. The 3 is just a number, 3. The R is the gas constant. The T is the temperature, of course, in Kelvin. And the M is for the molar mass. That is Maxwell's equation. We're going to figure out how to use that later on in this unit. Here's the next one, which is Graham's Law. Graham's Law relates the rate, that is the speed, at which one gas is going compared to the rate of which another gas is going. So the rate of gas A compared to the rate of gas B is equal to the square root of the inverse relationship of their molar masses or their densities. Okay, it's an inverse relationship. That's why BMM, that's for molar mass, and AMM, that's for molar mass. Okay, so this is comparing the rate at which one gas is moving compared to the rate at which another gas is moving. Just a little hint, if you get a number on this problem here, of course you're going to get a number, when you get a number on this problem, then if the number is greater than 1, then that gas is going faster. If that number is less than 1, then that gas is moving slower. You could take the reciprocal of it and then flip that. That works too. All right, that's Graham's law. The next one is the general or the combined gas law. So that is P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. Okay, again, we've got temperature in this, and those temperature units must be in Kelvin no matter what. That's an absolute. P is for pressure, V is for volume, T is for temperature. So this is comparing one gas compared to another gas at a set of pressure, volume, and temperature um, issues where you have changes in pressure, changes in volume, changes in temperature, okay, or multiple examples of those. Now, this is a very important equation because from this equation right here, you can get Charles' law, Boyle's law, and Gala Sachs' law all from the combined or the general gas law. That's very important. So if you hold the pressures constant, then you will get one of those. If you hold the volumes constant, then you would get another one. And if you hold the temperatures constant, you're going to get yet another one of those equations. That's Boyle's, Charles, and Gala Sachs' law. So it's kind of like a four for one. You memorize the general or combined gas law, and then you get four equations for one. That's the general gas law, Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gala Sachs' law, all right there, as long as you know what pressure, volume, or temperature you're holding constant to get the other three. All right, this is Avogadro's law, and this is comparing the volume and the amount of gas. Okay, so V is for volume, N is the number of moles. Okay, and so that is the amount of a gas. So you, you should see that this relationship here, um, we're going to do some graphs of some of these here, especially with the combined of the general gas law, and you'll see if this is a... Uh, one-to-one -one relationship or an inverse relationship or if one goes up one goes down a proportionality okay the next one here is dalton's law and dalton's law is the sum of all the pressures is equal to the total pressure so that's why the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of all the gases in that sample 
Typically, this is used with when collecting gases over water. That's why I have pH2O there for the partial pressure of water. The partial pressure of water is something that you can look up in a table in the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics at a specific temperature. And therefore, you can obtain that value from a set of data table information. And then from there, you can solve for the partial pressure of your gas if you know the atmospheric pressure, which can be measured with the barometer. All right, that's Dalton's Law. The next one, and so oh very important, is the ideal gas law, just like the ideal chemistry instructor. Okay, the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT, pervertinert, okay, pivnert, if you will. So P is for pressure, V is for volume, N is for the amount of gas in moles, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature, again, must be in Kelvin. The um, ideal gas law is not a comparison of a set of conditions, unlike the general or combined gas law, or Avogadro's law, which is the general combined gas law, Avogadro's law deals with a comparison where the conditions change. Ideal gas law is dealing with, here's a set of conditions, what is the pressure, what is the volume, how much gas do you have, and what is the temperature at which this is at. The R is the gas constant, you're not going to solve for that, that's a known value. Okay, the next one, which is actually derived from the ideal gas law, is the density of gases. And that is D is equal to PM over RT, and that's the density equation. So you can either memorize that density equation, or you can derive it from the ideal gas law. When we talk about this equation specifically, I'm going to give you a really easy way to remember this. And uh, you'll have to wait for that. All right, the next one is the van der Waals equation. Okay, and this is a derivation of the ideal gas law. And there's a correction factor for uh, the pressure and a correction factor for the volume of gases. Because you can see that the right-hand side is NRT, just like on the ideal gas law, which is NRT. But on the left-hand side, there's two correction factors, both for pressure and for volume. And that's why the ideal gas equation is actually just a close approximation to what reality is. But the van der Waals equation is the real deal, okay? All right, so we'll talk about the van der Waals equation probably towards the end of this whole entire unit, okay? But it's this very important equation. So what I want you to do is I want you to memorize all these equations that are on here, okay? Commit them to memory, and then review this video to figure out why am I going to be using these. And then as we go through the problems in this unit, you need to make sure that you're looking at these equations and then figuring out which equation is the most appropriate equation based on the information which I'm given. Sometimes you have to use two equations in sequence to get the right answer. All right. So that is another video. I'm the crazy hat chemist, of course, and I got a great crazy hat here. I got to keep my ears warm because it's super warm in here. Wait, it's super cold in here. All right. So give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will see you next time for more crazy hat chemistry videos. I'll see you later. Bye now.